surprise. Uh, oh, nice. The cover blew up. Yeah. Uh, oh. Hey, I'm Eeples Vox, back with the Intel Streamers Bootcamp. Intel and Skydance Interactive have sent me a copy of the VR game Archangel Hellfire to check out. And you can actually check out and try the PvP mode for free with your friends. And we'll have a link in the description below for you to try it out and check it out for yourself. So this felt like a perfect opportunity to talk about how to maximize and maintain frame rates for the smoothest VR experience. And a little bit of streaming in there as well. Archangel is a VR title from Skydance Interactive that puts you in a battle mech, which is a great fit for a VR title. Certain experiences are just better for VR. Recently, they've added a multiplayer aspect titled Archangel Hellfire, where the player has full control over their mech in PvP arenas with destructible environments. I've had a chance to play around with the game a bit, and the freedom of control has been pretty amazing. If you tuned into my recent live stream of the game, you may have actually won a copy of it as well, but you would have noticed that we had quite a bit of fun with some of the people from the Skydance team. I'm a big fan of the big open world of VR, but with that comes the importance of a high frame rate and smooth gameplay. If the frame rate is too low, not only will you get choppy gameplay, which you're probably used to seeing at some point, but you'll also be far more likely to experience motion sickness. As realistic as it would probably be to get nauseous spinning around in a real life battle mech, you really don't want to go through that. I'm usually not too sensitive to motion sickness from video games on the whole, but a choppy VR experience, that'll do it. Similarly, you want the frame rate to remain stable. Wild changes in the frame rate can also get you sick, so we're going to focus on keeping the frame rate high and stable in this video. For my purposes, I'm going to shoot for a consistent 90 FPS, or frames per second. To get the target FPS, the first thing I can do is make sure that my processor is suited for the workload. Pretty much everything is destructible in this game. It's actually really cool and I got to talk to some of the devs about how they set that up. So there is a lot of strain on the PC to keep frame rates high. Yeah, it was kind of awesome when we were working on this and um, we started looking at what we could push for the Intel machines. And uh, it was very exciting as someone who was working on destruction and had to be very careful about performance to suddenly have the specs of the i9s at your disposal. And so we started, uh, the artistic pipeline for the destruction is you can pretty much choose exactly how many pieces each rock or structure will break into. Right. And with the, uh, with the Intel machines, we could suddenly start breaking things into far more chunks than we had ever been able to try before. Um, we can make it look ridiculous. I yeah. Mean, we had to sort of scale it back for like aesthetic reasons because we could just get it to like sand. I'm running an Intel Core i9 processor in my rig, which helps keep performance high even while streaming. And during my stream, I was able to lower the X264 encoder CPU preset, that's how intense the encoding process is to make higher quality, down to medium, which is very hard to run in general, and it wasn't impacting the game, thanks to my Intel Core i9 CPU. For just my personal use, here's the setup I recommend. An Intel Core i9 7900X or higher CPU for optimum processing power for such an intense workload. There's also the new 9th generation Intel Core i9 processors coming soon as well. A NVIDIA GTX 1080 or higher graphics card. You want an available HDMI port for your VR headset and enough graphics power to keep the frame rates up. I use a GTX 1080 Ti, but there's even the new more powerful RTX lineup now as well. If you're on this level of a HEDT platform, you probably want at least 16 gigabytes of high-speed RAM as well. I'm using the Oculus Rift headset for this setup and running Archangel Hellfire through Steam. Archangel Hellfire makes changing settings easy. The menu just has two visual settings. <laughs> Overall graphics settings, which you can switch from low all the way up to ultra, which affects your, your graphics load, and then the destruction quality, which you choose based on your CPU. Low is optimized for more basic CPUs. Medium is optimized for 6 to 8 core CPUs, or they even have a special destruction setting set to take advantage of the Intel Core X series CPUs, like my i9. All of that should give us a great VR experience, but what if you intend to stream while you're playing? Here's what you need to do to retain the high, consistent frame rate and deliver an enjoyable stream to your audience. Make sure that your streaming settings are optimized for high performance. 720p or 1080p streaming is the standard, but the lower the resolution, the higher your stream can perform. 
If you are utilizing most of your CPU resources while playing, then you can try leveraging GPU encoding in your live streaming program instead of X264. That being said, on my Intel Core i9-7980XE, I was able to run the game and my live stream even at medium X264 preset for amazing quality. You can also use CPU affinity allocation to reserve just a few threads for your live stream so that way it doesn't impact your game. Remember, your VR frame rates for you are most important. Also keep in mind the cooling in your system and yourself. <laughs> VR is a workout for both your CPU and graphics card and they need to be adequ adequately cooled. It's also a workout physically, so stay comfortable too. That being said, make sure you have enough physical space to move around and have full control over your VR experience. A flaw in my streaming setup with Archangel Hellfire was that I had the ceiling fan on above me to keep me cool, except I kept reaching up and whacking my hand on it, which did not feel good. If you're experiencing dropped frames while streaming, take a look at your settings. A good rule to keep in mind, dropped frames are a result of upstream issues with your internet connection. Skipped frames are usually due to your encoder not being able to keep up with processing your live stream settings. And just a generally low frame rate in your streaming program is a result of your graphics card being overloaded and not being able to composite or render your OBS scene. If necessary, don't be afraid to lower your textures or overall graphics settings in-game to increase FPS. Having a high frame rate in headset is incredibly important for a smooth VR experience and your ability to keep playing, and that should take priority. Also, just take breaks when you need it, please. Um, but I still think it's easier with four. Might just be out of practice. <laughs> just almost <laughs> fell over in real life. <laughs> That's all for today. For more Intel Streamers Bootcamp videos, uh, take a look at the links at the end of this video. Check back for newly released topics on how to better your streaming and creator experience. And if you have a question or suggestion, leave me a comment down below. I'm Vox here to make tech easier and more fun. And I'll see you next time.